<laughs> so, hi guys, um, you recognize me. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, 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 and this is, this is Taylor Bland, uh, hey. whom I've interviewed um, last week. And um, surprise, today we're here to interview me. <laughs> the tables have turned. The tables have turned. <laughs> wow. All right, I'm ready. I really hope I do this justice uh -huh. because you are an incredible person and it's an absolute honor to have the opportunity to interview you today. Thank you. So if, if we spoke about each and every one of your achievements, we would be here until International Women's Day 2025. <laughs> <laughs> so try and give us like an overview of where your actual journey began. Where does my journey begin? I guess in the, my mom's belly. Um, so my, uh, my parents are French. I was born in LA. Um, I grew up in Paraguay. Um, I actually grew up between Paraguay, France, and a small island in the Caribbean called Saint Martin. Wow. Um, and then I went back to France where I finished uh, my high school. I went to international school. Um, I, uh, part of international school is that you study in two languages. So my regular high school curriculum was in Spanish and French. Um, and then when I was 19, I moved to Miami with $300 in my pocket. Um, and I started working as a uh, in-house nanny, slash assistant, slash cook, slash everything. <laughs> Pretty much everything. Uh, pretty much everything. Um, and um, I, at the time, so I have a, I have an American passport. I, uh, but I didn't have a social security number because I had never lived in the U.S. So I had to wait for a while because uh, because I didn't have that number, I couldn't work. So I worked as a as an au pair, and then uh, I got kicked out of that house um, for reasons, uh, interesting reasons. <laughs> We can talk about that another day. And that's what I'm saying. It's just so much. Um, it's going to have to be a series. Is it? It's going to have to be a series of interviews. But uh, yeah, I worked with illegal immigrants for about uh, nine months. Uh, I had two, two jobs. Uh, I, my first job was at Cinnabon. Uh, <laughs> I was making the little cinnamon rolls uh, in Aventura Mall in Miami uh, from 6 a.m. till... 3 p.m. and then at 6 p.m. I was a um, I was a cleaner at a Jewish uh, school in Miami wow. <laughs> until midnight, and I did that for about nine months um, until I finally got my freaking social security <laughs> number, and then I started working in luxury retail pretty much immediately. Wow. Um, then I did my um, I did my uh, my degree in international relations. <clears throat> so I studied part-time while I was uh, working full-time. Um, yeah, then I stayed in Miami for about seven years. Then I came, I traveled to India. Um, I got married. It was horrible. <laughs> it was, <laughs> I was in an abusive relationship for four years. Um, yeah, my ex-husband uh, is Indian. I met him in Miami. We went to India. I had the whole... Indian wedding thing. Uh, then we came back to Europe. We went to Paris for a year. It was horrible. <laughs> uh, then we came to London. It was still horrible. Uh, and then eventually, I went. I came out of that relationship. Um, I worked for uh, a couple embassies here in London, the Paraguayan embassy and the Mauritian High Commission. Um, I worked in the Mauritian High Commission for two and a half years. Um, then one of my managers said, Chloe, uh, you, you need to get out of here because there is no, uh, there is nothing else for you in this embassy. Um, I strongly suggest you, you did your masters and you worked for United Nations. And I was like, actually, that's, that's <laughs> what I've always wanted to work for United Nations. I just never oh. thought I had it in me. Um, and so I quit my job and I did my masters <laughs> in uh, translating and interpreting at University of Westminster. And wow. uh, and before the end of my masters, I was working for United Nations. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah. that is so much to pack into the first what twenty yeah. something years of your life. I'm thirty four. Wow. Yeah, I'm thirty four, um, and. Uh, 
yeah, then started freelancing as a translate as translator mm -hmm. and interpreter. At the same time as I did my master's, I uh, I got accredited as a life coach. Um, I had done a lot of personal development coming out of my abusive marriage, yeah. uh, especially. Um, and then I started uh, coaching women. I went to, I went back to India, uh, and that's and I ran my first workshops uh, in India in New Delhi. Wow. Yeah, and that's where I got my first few clients. It's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, wow. Yeah, it was amazing. And then, yeah, I came back to London after that, continued coaching my clients. Um, and uh, 2018, I founded Call Girls Club, which was basically just, it just started as a way for my clients to keep in touch, mm -hmm. uh, even once they were done uh, with their coaching. Uh, but also kind of like creating a little community because I do all my sessions online so I felt like um, there was a bit of a of a connection missing of a, of a personal you know face-to-face -face thing missing so I created Cool Girls Club for my clients and then it kind of became what it is now <laughs> yeah this wow massive network. <laughs> yeah there's now about 50 uh, 50 girls in the private Facebook group um, and then, you know, doing interviews with really inspiring women, growing the network, wow. um, new clients, workshops, events, um, guest speaking. Yeah, it's been amazing. You're really doing it all. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, it just doesn't, it doesn't stop traveling at the same time everywhere. Yeah. So it seems like traveling and culture has obviously been a very big part of your life. Yes, yeah, massive. How important is culture to you and how has that sort of shaped the direction of your life? Um, so it's massively important because I, I am a multicultural person and I, I'm, I'm a third cultured kid. Mm -hmm. uh, you, yeah, we call ourselves. It's a very specific group of people in the world. <laughs> <laughs> you know, your parents are from somewhere, but you were born somewhere else mm -hmm. and now you live somewhere else. Um, so culture has been always super important because I grew up between all these different cultures and and I noticed how uh, every time I changed places uh, a part of myself a part of my personality would come forth and it was very uh, I find it um, it, it was my way of kind of like discovering myself and who I was and what I resonated with in life and the people that I resonated with and each language has a vibe and each culture has a vibe and if you like if I if I when I live here I'm someone I'm Chloe living in the UK but when I go to Paris I'm I'm Chloe in Paris it's like it, there is a difference there is a I, I'm the same person really mm -hmm. but a part of my personality comes forward um, and so culture has been amazing for me because it's enabled me to fulfill and satisfy different parts of who I am um, and just being very um, yeah just being very uh, how do you call that yeah just like grounded and and understand that I'm not just like one faceted I'm multifaceted and there's all these different things about Chloe that need to express themselves and so culture and traveling is a great way for me to tap into Maybe I have multiple personalities. I, 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 I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm secretly a psycho and travel has been my... my uh, Cover. My medicine. I don't know. But um, yeah, traveling has just like really enabled me to discover who I was. Oh, this is incredible. <laughs> You've had so many twists and turns in different directions. Has anyone ever kind of brought up any criticisms of not following sort of like the traditional path where we yes here we go <laughs> i mean in, in society it seems yeah. to be a trend where you grow up you have this clear purpose or you're meant to be able to understand that you go to school you go to uni you get a job you get married and like that's the one path has anybody ever critiqued or criticized sort of the path that you've taken to get where you are yes yes my family a lot uh <clears throat> my family, but also um, uh, maybe not cri criticize, but I, I've I've seen the 
the very curious looks on people's mm -hmm. faces yeah. where, and especially uh, abroad as well, uh, perhaps in more uh, humble areas where safety and security and financial stability and family is extremely, extremely important. Um, you know, where they're like, what? <laughs> yeah. What do you do? And like, oh, so, but how old are you? But you don't have any kids? But, you know, but what do your parents think about this? And like, you know, I think you should, I think you should get married now. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I think you've traveled enough now. No. It's okay. You've had your fun. You did it. You know, oh. you did what you wanted. <laughs> now you should, you know, you should. Oh, I feel so sorry for you. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I've had that. Oh, that just hurts to hear. I, I, I've had that. And I like, let's be honest, it's not an easy path. Yes. Um, and it, it, you know, I'm a lot, I'm living a lot in the unknown. And that's my choice uh, because I love being free. But it also comes with consequences that I'm happy to deal with mm -hmm. because... I've made my choice in terms of my what's it, what's really important to me, uh, and travel is is essential to who I am, and it, it is essential to my happiness. So yeah, like my family, um, even though they've all traveled a lot as well, um, they've all kind of like stopped at some point. Yeah, <laughs> and maybe I will stop. I don't know, but um, my dad has told me, um, you know. Uh, you're just having fun what are you doing with your life and that's that was very hurtful um, mm. but yeah or my, my grandma being like when are you gonna buy your own place you know um, but that's just because she's got so much shit she wants to get rid of that she would like <laughs> me to get a house just so that she can give me her shit <laughs> um, um, yeah I'm just like not necessarily like up front, but mm -hmm. you know, I hear things uh, yeah. from my family that uh, that other members of my family tell me that that's what they heard. <laughs> so you know, try gossip. Understanding the highs and lows is is important, and yeah. obviously, you're explaining that you've you've hit some highs and you've obviously hit some lows. How did you get yourself? out of that low point was it focusing on a purpose was it looking at an inspirational figure how did you how did you do it uh, out of the abusive marriage for example <laughs> let's take that one I mean, that's, that yeah. was the most difficult one um, so that one was such a lesson uh, it was a slap in my face um, the way I got out of it or the way I, I was able to pick myself up really mm. is um, finding purpose mm -hmm. and fi finding what I love what is it that I love and giving myself the space and the time to find out what is it that I love because it wasn't like immediate you know it, it wasn't like universe I'd like to know what my purpose is there you go mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah but it was that easy yeah. <laughs> you know it wasn't it wasn't like that like I had to First of all, there was a lot of trauma that that I had to digest. Um, mm -hmm. uh, that still comes up for me. You know, it's not it's not a it's not always um, boom. You're done with it, and you moved on to the next thing. But purpose. Okay, so this is this is this is the there was a moment where um, I was so down and I was so depressed after I got divorced. I felt so empty. Mm -hmm. I felt like I didn't know who Chloe was anymore I felt like Chloe had been this person or tried to be this person that she wasn't and now uh you know at that point I was just like I don't know who the fuck I am anymore like mm -hmm. what does Chloe love who is she what does she want you know what's like and I was 29 only so I was like fuck like I've got so much time left you know to live and like I'm in this horrible point in my life where I actually thought about suicide in a not in a way that oh my god I'm gonna do it mm -hmm. but I but questioning it like oh I really understand why some people take themselves out mm -hmm. because 
life can become so difficult and so meaningless and so shitty and you can feel so bad about everything like depression just fucking hits yeah. you and i used to think like ah oh, depressed people they're so annoying <laughs> you know mm. like how can you like not find happiness and motivation yeah. in life and mm. you know get over yourself yeah. you know but when it hit me i was like oh this shit is real mm. like i understand why people think that perhaps the best way to stop that suffering is to actually stop living mm. and i really looked at it like i really sat with with that idea of like you know is it better for me to like not exist uh is there really nothing in this world worth living for um and obviously the answer was like oh come on you know <laughs> like yeah. of course there is amazing things you know you've got like you love traveling and like there's just so many things that you haven't done yet that you would love to do um and i was like oh, oh okay all right and um but i you know questioning questioning your questioning your living questioning your life form and um questioning the value that you give to it you know like is life worth living uh that was a massive question that was like existential crisis <laughs> you know that's pretty <laughs> philosophical yeah. yeah i was like super philosophical i was yeah. like oh my god this is this is some really dark stuff but mm. you know uh rumi says light is through the wound um and so i i had to i had to look at that that question for myself and and i had to tackle it and i had to come up with my own answer and the, and the answer was like you know what if life i i just realized like life has absolutely no meaning there is no meaning to life like you don't know when you die if you're going to be reincarnated you know mm -hmm. it depends on your religion but even if you believe that how do you know exactly Yeah. You know, you you can believe in reincarnation and yes, after I die I will become pff, a tiger or whatever. <laughs> you know, but but how do you know? Mm -hmm. Like how do you tangibly know that? And and you don't. And so just in case <laughs> <laughs> all the objects, yeah, you know, <laughs> just in case that doesn't happen. Mm. Um well, oh, you know, if life is so empty and meaningless, um then I interpreted it in the in the sense that oh well that means that I can do whatever I want with it like if there is no meaning to this life because I'm going to die at some point and then when I die what happens mm. um and even if I leave a legacy I won't be there <laughs> I won't be there anymore so it it was just like there is no point it's just pointless living mm. is actually pointless but because it is pointless i can do whatever the fuck i want and that was my that's what actually <laughs> took me out of my of my depression and then i started on this journey of finding my point mm -hmm. and giving my life the meaning that i wanted to give it because i could because it was meaningless anyways So <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yes. It's a, it, yes. it's a bit contradicting, but yeah, life is meaningless and empty and pointless. And so yay! I can, <laughs> I oh my god, it, like all of a sudden it just all the 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 expectations and the and the the rules and the the um, the standards that I had set for myself and that I had believed in and the things that I thought I should be doing, all that sort of like dropped off. And I was like, none of it matters. Like, actually, none of it matters. My life actually doesn't matter. It does. It, not that I don't matter, like mm -hmm. in an egoic way. But whether I'm here or I'm not here, life is just gonna go on. Exactly. You know. And yes. so, if whether I'm here or not doesn't really make a difference, then who cares i'm just going to do what i want you know and that and that's what really 
got me started. Um, and that's what really took me out of my shit, mm -hmm. took me out of my low. Um, and then I was like, that's amazing because it just, it just gave me so much freedom to be whomsoever I wanted to be and mm -hmm. do whatever I wanted to do. And, and just, it just gave me so much space you know, and, 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 and freedom. And it just really allowed me to be like, oh, awesome. So I want to do this and I want to do that. And why don't I try this thing as well? And, uh, and that's how it got me started. And then, you know, I, being determined to completely reinvent myself and rediscover who Chloe was, not who Chloe was expected to be but who chloe really was i was like i've had enough of living for other people i'm gonna live for me now mm. and and i've never looked back and actually my life has been amazing since then wow that's incredibly powerful <laughs> Jeez. there you go <laughs> so how did the idea of the cool girls club start was it based off going through all of those lows and finding or attempting to find purpose and direction or how did that have any relevance to what you'd previously gone through um, so Cool Girls Club started, as I mentioned, like just as a way for me to keep in touch with my client, but it was really like a support system. Mm -hmm. So I really wanted to create a, a sense of community um, for women who are on their way to finding their purpose or maybe who have found their purpose, but they're on their way to implementing that in life, manifesting their purpose in life into reality um and so the cool girls club was meant to be a support system a support group a su supportive community of other women who are on the same journey um and who can uh empower and inspire one another um and also because i saw for myself you know when i came out of that of that difficult marriage um i was i felt very very lonely and finding your path and finding your purpose and actually pff, turning your dreams into reality and like living your purpose mm -hmm. um is a grand idea and but in reality it's a lot more uh it, i wouldn't say it's a lot more difficult but i can i i would say that it's tricky because the life that you've created around yourself is based on the person you thought you needed to be in life and so now you're trying to create a new life for yourself and you're trying to transform your life and you're trying to be more true to who you are and you're trying to live your purpose and the people around you uh don't understand mm -hmm. and i've seen that happen very very often to me but also to other to other people where you know they've decided they found their purpose they found their vision they found that thing that they would really love to do in their life and then they start yeah they're like really excited mm -hmm. i'm gonna go and i'm gonna do it and i'm just so happy about it and i love it and oh my god i just can't wait you know and then they come home <laughs> and then they come home and they tell their husband babe this is what's gonna happen i'm gonna do this i'm just so excited you know, and all they get is like, you fucking nuts or what? Yeah. You know? Yep. You know, like, yep. what about the money? What about the kids? Yes. What about this? What about me? You don't think about me? Da, 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 da. You know, and how we're going to afford this? And like, who's going to take care of this? And da, 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 da. And you just want to go and live your life and be happy. And so <laughs> that I, I've experienced that and other, and I've seen others experience that and having a community of people like that has been such a lifesaver mm. um and it's it's enabled me to stay focused on my goal and my purpose and it didn't matter what everybody else thought i had a group of people who were on that same journey with me and who were facing similar challenges mm -hmm. or even bigger ones um but there was no judgment in terms of, yeah. you know, what's your purpose? Oh, you know, I, I want to do my, at that time, I want to do my master's in, in translation and interpreting and I want to work for United Nations and I'm going to be location free. And I'm going to travel the world. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there you, you go. go. You know, and then, and, yeah. then, and then people, 
in my life outside of that would be oh but um you know that's all really nice mm. but you know you need a proper job chloe and so you know what you hear and it's not that they're bad or that they don't want to see you succeed well actually some people don't want you very to succeed. true <laughs> very true you know because because you're just triggering their own um their own crap about you know them not following their dreams so yes um i call them dream poopers <laughs> yes <laughs> dream poopers so um having a community of people who you are free to dream with and who acknowledge you for you know the dreams that you want to go for and who celebrate with you the small and big uh, achievements that you create on your way to living your dreams that is super important and that's not something that is easy to find you know um, in your in your current environment um, and so cool girls club is really about that it's about uh, creating a network of women and a community of women where everyone has the space to be themselves and there is no judgment about you know what your dream is if you tell me you know i want to become a professional skydiver i'll be like awesome <laughs> that's awesome yeah so what's your plan how can i help you <laughs> and this is probably the first time that a lot of these a lot of these people have actually heard somebody affirm what they want to do yes how how has that kind of how does that make you feel like if if you give somebody that encouragement and you see that light in their eyes mm. does that also propel you to go forward and continue on with your passion oh or? yes absolutely absolutely and that, hence you know that's why it becomes a support system so you you know i you go for your dream and i support you for going for your dream and then I know that I'm going for my dream and that I know that you support me in me going for my dream and it and in in that space there is no competition there yeah. is just holding the space for one another to live their dreams you know and mm -hmm. and, and and loving one another for the amazing human being that we are you know and and but also calling each other on our own bullshit you yeah, know, like if you tell me, I want to be a professional skydiver, but my mom and dad won't let me. Uh. <laughs> you know, I'll be like, da, da. <laughs> you know, wake up to yes. that. <laughs> you can do it. Yes. Who gives a fuck? There's accountability there, which is great. So a lot of these yeah. connections, I take it, they're not they're not local connections. They're connections that you make with people all over the world. I mean, yeah. we met across countries and things yeah. like that. How? How has the power of social media especially been able to sort of play into that? Wow, it's been amazing. It has been really amazing. Like a lot of the women that I've interviewed have, I've met them through Instagram. Uh, but also like you, you know, I've, I've posted a, um, uh, an advert on, I don't even know what it is. It's like, <laughs> it's like, a, it's like a PR yes. platform. Mm -hmm. Um, looking for contributors and, and people like that and experts and things like that and I, I was just like yeah let me just like write something cool girls club needs inspiring women and I got like 60 emails of women who were like I'm living my purpose I'm living my purpose I'm living. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> you know and I was like Yay. I was like shit there's a lot of women living their purpose you know yeah. and and uh, and it's it's been amazing to see the diversity of women uh of backgrounds and of purposes yeah you know uh i i, I saw there's this lady who emailed me and she created a, a an online platform where single parents can uh can uh, can become flatmates with their kids wow that's incredible that's amazing yeah that's in, that's honestly incredible yeah and i'm like wow yeah, no one ever thought mm. about this yeah that's obvious you know that's amazing and so because she's a single parent and she's found it difficult to mm -hmm. find a flat for her and her kid yeah you know nobody wants to share a flat with a single mom and a kid mm. but if there's another single mom and a kid then you know yeah let's share it flat. works it works because the kids can play together 
you know, a mom can go out on a date and she knows that there's another adult in the house. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like it's really useful. Um, just very inspiring. Yeah, I mean, there's just so many. Like you're one of them. Uh, Instagram has been amazing. Uh, you know, PR has been amazing as well. Who has been an inspiration for you? Growing, mm. like growing up especially, who was an inspiration for you? Indiana Jones. <laughs> I wanted to Enjoy. be Indiana Jones when I was little. Um, I wanted to be an adventurer. Um, Tick. <laughs> modern one, definitely. I don't have a lasso. And, um, but who has been an inspiration? I think, um, yeah, in, Indiana Jones was my, my kind of guy. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, and I, I, I've always wanted to be uh, an adventurer and I've always wanted to be part of amazing stories and you know and help people and visit exotic places mm -hmm. and um yeah he's super cool he really is <laughs> he's really really he's great. cool <laughs> yeah um another one of my inspiring figures was um my uncle um i always for me like he's always been uh an amazing mentor is someone that I always looked up to someone who went very very high into uh, his studies very very early on mm -hmm. worked for Nike for like 25 years at very high level um, became vice president of soccer for Europe like wow. just like you know but also not just that but the family that he's been able to create like I come from a very split up family my parents are divorced and he's the only guy in our entire family who has not divorced and who has a fully <laughs> <laughs> fully functioning you know family with his uh, lovely wife who's my aunt and then my two cousins and and you can just see the love and that for me in terms of family I've always been super super inspired by him and his ability to um, to kind of like stick together and like mm -hmm. be strong and communicate and create uh strengthen their relationships even in times of crap yeah <laughs> you know so um that has always been very inspiring that's amazing yeah so you've, you've described some of the mentors especially indiana jones as mm. being quite cool yeah what is cool to you oh fuck <laughs> here we go you knew it was coming it is the cool girls club it is the cool girls club so yeah. what what is cool to you what is cool to me? Cool to me is um, hmm, is being inspiring uh, in whatever in whatever way that you are inspiring. So mm -hmm. uh, being true to yourself uh, and going for going for what you love and um, being being determined to going for what you love and um, being a step be kind of like being a stand for your your goals and your yeah like let's say I say this is what I want to do yeah mm -hmm. and I, you don't have to agree with it or like you don't have to let's say again with the I don't know why I keep thinking of the skydiver <laughs> let's, say, let's say I want to become a professional skydiver you know maybe that's not your thing it doesn't have to be your thing mm -hmm. but you know how would that skydiver be cool <laughs> is, is that she maybe she started from nothing not being a skydiver being mm -hmm. shit scared of being a skydiver but being super super clear and determined that that's what she wants to do and then making it happen yeah and i think that's fucking cool yes you know be, being unapologetically her and just going for that thing that she wants and not not asking for anyone's permission yeah or validation approval of her being a professional skydiver um so yeah just being just being determined being clear on what you'd love to create in life and just going for it um and i think that requires courage mm -hmm. and and a strength of character and a little bit of craziness yeah <laughs> so um that's what cool means to me being yourself uh, and doing yourself as well it's really powerful. Yeah. So being International Women's Day, mm. is there a 
Is there a final message that you mm. want to tell if you if you had the audience of every female at the moment in the world being International Women's Day? What mm. would you leave people with? Hmm, that's a big one. Um, so yeah, that's a that's a tricky one. <laughs> <laughs> that is a tricky one. Um, I think one of the things that I that I want to tell women for in International Women's Day is that there is that thing that you'd love to do that perhaps you're not doing and so my request more than a message is that you do it uh, because when you do it uh, you're going to learn so much from it um, the message that i want to send you is just it's, it's irrelevant it's so big that you will learn that lesson through going for what you love and and not compromising on that. So my request for you on International Women's Day is that, you know, identify that thing that you've always wanted to do and that you've never really given yourself permission to do and go and do it. Don't ask anybody's permission. Just give that to yourself. And that in itself is going to be transformational. And after that, you probably start again and do it again and again and again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and go on a whole different journey. Yeah. We can, we can put that in print. They, they often say that the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Yes. And uh, clearly you're an embodiment of that and you're an inspiration oh, you. for so many people out there. Um, you're absolutely remarkable and it's been an absolute honor thank to be able you. to interview you and just feel this energy and this just radiation of positivity. Oh, thank you. Please, I encourage everybody who's watching, get involved. Um, Chloe is absolutely incredible. So inspiring. Um, I really hope that we can do this again, do a part two or part three, because there's so much <laughs> more. This was just the tip of the iceberg. But um, thank you for everything that you're doing. And thank you for affording women the opportunity to really go out there and get what they want in life. You are, you are honestly incredible. Thank you.